I grew up in an old house. It's a weakness. Restoring, bringing back to life an old house seems like the coolest thing in the world to do. We were here, it was cold, dreary, the house was packed full. We came here the first time with flashlights, walking around, stumbling over stuff. We left here, we drove to the restaurant, we're gonna go have some lunch. We went to the restaurant down the street. By the time we folded up our little um, menus and ordered, I looked at Penny and I said, so how long before we make an offer? And she goes, right now. I called the real estate guy, made him an offer. I said, I'm gonna go wash my hands. By the time I came out of the men's room, my phone was ringing. The guy said, your offer was accepted. I was scared to death. I said, what have I gotten myself into? And we were told if we had not purchased the house the following spring, it was gonna be bulldozed by the, the city. So if we didn't purchase this house about a year and a half ago, it wouldn't be standing here right now. This would be a vacant lot. And we thought it was too important to let it go. When you walk in, there's a vestibule in the front, which is a great airlock. It's got the original tile from 1909. And then you walk in the second set of doors, and there's the original doors. You got this gorgeous center hall staircase. And to the right and the left, there are two parlors. One's the men's parlor and one's the ladies' parlor. And on the ceiling is beautiful faded murals, frescoes on the ceiling. Beyond that, there's the formal dining room. There's a room that's on the house plan says bedroom, but that was the billiard room. They had a billiard table in there. Then you have the butler's, the bathroom, and then the butler's bedroom. Then you've got the kitchen, which used to be a screened-in porch with a tiny kitchen and a tiny laundry room. You go up the main staircase, there's the huge center hall upstairs, which will lead out into a balcony. Once we redo the wraparound porch, there's a balcony up on the top. And there's five bedrooms upstairs and two bathrooms with the original clawfoot tubs, the original sinks and toilets from 1909, 1910. It's all original. We got a note from one of the girls on Facebook because she was the culprit and she had a curling iron, which probably dates it 60s or 70s. She left the curling iron on and started a fire and burned a hole through the roof. And after that, the house went into disrepair. They had renters and the house like really did like a death spiral. But every day that you do a little bit more and you stabilize the wall, you empty the trash out, you clean it up, you put a coat of paint on something, it's like, wow, this is gonna be really cool. And every little baby step you take is that one more step closer to um, the realization, this house is gonna be nice. feel it in our bones that this is something worthwhile. It's going to be a beautiful place. And um, this is not my life's work, but this is what gets to me. It, it touches us. Can you imagine people built these houses without power tools? How do you cut a 12 by 12 piece of wood using a handsaw? How do you lift it you know, 50 feet up in the air, get it in position? Um, 
how do you build something with your hands? And I don't have this talent. I can appreciate it. I said, but when I think that somebody conceived of this in their mind and made something come out through their fingertips and actually created something, I don't have that talent. But I can appreciate somebody that does. And I want to keep it here for whomever comes after me to enjoy it. Every time we go up and down the main staircase and I run my hand down that banister, right now I've got goosebumps because Penny and I both say, can you imagine all the little hands? This, these people had six children. Imagine all the little hands that went up and down grasping the same handrail over a hundred years ago. And I said the families that were brought into this house grew up here and some of them were carried out the door. You know, that was the last thing that they knew was being in this house. And if we brought it back to life, if somebody maintains it when I'm dead and buried, when I'm gone, this house is going to be here easily another hundred years with no problem. It was really nice having the original house plans gifted to us by the last owners. That was a real find. We're going to have copies made, so we'll give one to the Red Springs Museum and we'll keep a couple copies scattered around so we will have a copy of the original house plans. And the date on these plans is July 24th, 1909. And that was done by a lady, I believe her husband was deceased, and she had six or more children. And this was her house. And her name was Mrs. Cox, C-O-X-E. And this is the Cox house. It's always been our philosophy since we've done the past six houses. We're here temporarily. If we're lucky, I'm hoping for maybe another 20 years. But I'm a caretaker. This is not my house. This belongs to the community. And I'm hoping that what I do will enable the next person just to maintain it and keep it here for another 100 years.